Hey YouTube, welcome back. I've got quite the build for you this time around. So this is another one of the Vision GL weekend races that takes place here on Twitch. We have uh, we have the Sork weekend and the three required skills of which you need to choose one to put in your build were Disintegrate, Volcanic Orb, and Meteor. So I actually started this weekend wanting to play some Disintegrate. I was thinking maybe I could put on a Singularity and like have some hit damage as well and not mess up. The Ignivar's Head plus Gambler's Fallacy. Or maybe even the new Soul Gambler's Fallacy that you can get LP on. I had ideas. I had things in mind that I wanted to do for the weekend tournament. But then, all of a sudden, during our podcast that we host right here on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash the Pig, by the way. The Epic Epoch Podcast. We were talking about one of the new unique items that just got added to the game. So this ring, um, it, it's kind of interesting. It's deceptively strong if you haven't thought about it yet. So we talked about this ring. It's called Ashes of Mortality on the podcast. And uh, people in Twitch chat started talking about how much worn you can get with this ring. And there were screenshots floating around of people getting 200 and 300,000 ward. And I was like, you know what? Get, get Disintegrate out of here. I'm going to play some Fireball. I'm going to play maybe Volcanic Orb for single target. Maybe Meteor for single target. And we're going to get 300,000 ward. We are now at the end of our weekend. We are the rank one hardcore solo arena pusher at 400 waves. And we've hit 300,000 ward a couple times. <laughs> this ring is absolutely cracked. So let's talk about the ring first. And then we'll talk about fireball. And then we'll kind of walk through the rest of the build, right? So I, I wanted to play disintegrate. But I didn't want to play disintegrate until I had Ignabar's head. I needed something that I could play beforehand. So I was actually thinking like, listen, maybe maybe I could play like a big meme build. Maybe I could play Frostbite Lightning Blast and just kind of have fun. Use Volcanic Orb to apply Frostbites as well. And maybe it'll just be like a good time, right? But during the podcast, we were talking about Ashes of Mortality here. So Ashes of Mortality, I'll read the ring to you here. It's, I got it up on the screen. It says 13% chance on hit. So not on skill use. 13% chance on hit to gain 12 ward per ignite on you or the target. So what we do is uh, we wear two of these things. They, they are a very common drop. They drop from tier one Soulfire Bastion. And I did two runs to get my first ring and then another two runs to get the second ring. So uh, these rings have to be hot fixed at some point. My When I shoot fireball, I, I shoot out f four projectiles plus there's a little explosion. So I've got five hits going on with my build. When I put on my first ring, on my kind of bad ignite fireball build, I went from generating no ward to normally about 10,000 and then a tops of about 20,000. When I put on the second ring, I shot up to like 100,000 ward tops and maybe 20 or 30,000 ward consistently while I'm running through maps. The tankier the monster is, the more ignites you can stack up on the monster, which means that when this does proc, you're going to be getting even more ward out of it. While I was doing my arena push, when I loaded into a zone, it took me maybe one second to get about 30,000 ward. And then from there on out for the rest of the arena encounter, pretty much unkillable because you're between, you know, 30,000 and 300,000 ward by using these rings. Okay, so that's the rings. They're absolutely busted. Honestly, I like these rings well enough just because they have the word cast speed on them and cast speed isn't something that you can normally get on a ring. But the real thing about this ring that's so busted right now is that first line of text. Okay, so we're playing Fireball. And the idea was let's play Ignite Fireball because then we can use either Disintegrate or... Uh, sorry, we can use either Volcanic Orb or Meteor for single target damage or maybe to get some nice global buffs in the case of Meteor. And we'll just like apply a bunch of ignites using this. And if we're playing ignite, we might as well scale the ignite damage. So I went into this intending to play ignite. I wanted to have some nice LP gloves, maybe some atrophy for some penetration against all resistance for damage over time. Maybe a soul fire to give me nice ignite with fire skills. Maybe some dragon fire boots or some fiery dragon boots, which we actually ended up not finding, unfortunately. But we did get a nice calamity helmet here with one helm or with one LP which is 150 Ignite chance, and then we also slapped some Pierce on it after our third try getting a 1LP helmet here. I, I think the better choice, if I had known this going into it, would have been play Crit Fireball and just 
happen to have some ignite in your build. So maybe you use ignite idols, maybe you get like a nice ignite blessing, maybe you have exalted ignite chance on your amulet, and you just have some ignite instead of trying to have the ignite as your damage altogether. So I can show you with my buffs up like this. My current tooltip is 126. Uh, if I could get percent chance to ignite on fire skill instead of intelligence on my chest piece, I could have much more damage or maybe even a 2 LP helmet, or maybe even fiery dragon shoes. Quite frankly, we're even using a shield. We could have a lot more damage than this. But it was hard in a weekend tournament to get enough damage. And comparatively, the people who were playing basically the same build as me, but playing it as crit instead, uh, had tool tips of 200,000 damage a day, or like two days ago, right? So my damage is pretty low. Um, I didn't I didn't realize what the discrepancy was between the ignite version of fireball and the crit version of fireball So I think if I were gonna build this exact character again I'd probably just play crit and have some ignite chance that said all of this uh, All of this depends on whether ashes of mortality this ring is gonna be nerfed and this ring has to be nerfed So assume that these rings are nerfed. Maybe you can check the patch notes We're currently in patch 085 D and these rings were just introduced last Wednesday and today it's Monday so they've almost been out for a week now at this point so that's the thought process of the build let me give you a quick rundown of what we did with this build take note that I don't think ignite fireball is the right choice it could be fun it's one of those things that if you have two or three LP on every single item sure you can play some kind of ignite fireball build you could even do it with the twisted heart and you could have a bleeding uh, bleeding heart amulet but then you'd be stacking bleeds on yourself. Maybe you want to use gloves that have elemental damage leeches life. Maybe you want something like that. But honestly, I don't know. I, <laughs> I think I think crit is just like a better place to be altogether. Let's walk through the build. Let's do mastery first. We've got 25 points in our base, 67 over here in Sork, and 15 in Spellblade. The 15 in Spellblade gives us enchant weapon. Uh, we don't have a good fifth skill to use. You could use snap freeze. You could use focus but my mana was fine so i never used focus so i just ended up using enchant weapon instead so that's why these points are here what's funny about being a mage and being a sork here is that it seems like we have good ignite support we actually don't we actually have very little ignite support there's not much to do with our skill points beyond level 80 or so so we've got like 20 or so skill points that are just kind of garbage you don't have anything good to do with them so let's talk about it real quick We've got some points in resistances here, one point in health, you could dump more points here, and you could dump points into 7% increased damage as well. I find these points incredibly, incredibly lackluster, and I would rather have, like, intelligence instead. Because intelligence is 4% increased damage instead of 7, but it also gives you ward retention stuff. We've got some points up here, because this is pretty generic, strong uh, ward retention, and then we have some fire damage ignites, fire damage and ignite chance with fire skills here. In Sork, we're not a crit build, so we don't need this. We don't need any mana regen. We're not spell damage. We're only trying to scale Ignite. So we have five points here for travel, five points for some cast speed, and then all the fire points across the top. We do have five points into chill chance. And this chill chance, I, I need to call this out. During the arena, we have four fireballs that shoot out, and then we also have one little explosion that happens. We apply chill extraordinarily well. And honestly, this is the most impactful thing that I was noticing during my arena push. If I had had chill plus slow, the monsters would have been just absolutely lethargic trying to walk toward me. Chill is insane. This is like, <laughs> I, 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 we know this and I put chill in my build, but I've never had it feel so apparent as the arena push that I just had up to 400 waves. We have two points here in Arcane Avalanche. I feel as though every single Sork should have two points in this node. It doesn't freeze two nearby enemies, like it says. It freezes two nearby areas toward your, around your character, which means that it could potentially freeze, you know, 10 or 20 monsters. Elemental damage over time, ignite duration, ignite duration, this is great. Ignite duration also happens to mean that we can stack up a bunch of ignites, which is cute. These four, sorry, these eight points down here, elemental damage, stun chance, sure, whatever. And then cooldown recovery speed. This is the best part of being a sword because it helps you with your flame ward, which is the brunt of your defenses. These nodes here, normally you'd see two or three points put into this. I have nine points in this because I have nothing better to spec into. 
Speaking of nothing better to spec into, these six points up here for elemental damage and elemental resistance in the Spellblade tree, they're pretty good, but all these other points are wasted. So we just don't have anything else to spec into instead. So let's go to skills. I'm going to start with Enchant Weapon because Enchant Weapon is kind of interesting, right? Normally, if you were playing an Ignite build, let's say we do have this ring. This ring wants as many Ignites on the enemy as possible because that scales our defense, which means we don't want to consume the Ignites. If we consume the Ignites in the enemy, then we're hampering our own ward generation. If you're using these rings, first of all, enjoy the build. It's hilarious. But if you're using this ring, you don't want these nodes on the bottom left here, the Searing Conflagration. If the rings have been nerfed in the future and you do want to do this, I would recommend dropping some points out of this bottom here, because these points really aren't that good. Maybe we drop some points out of uh, two points here for travel for the Strike, and we dump all those points over here instead. And this would allow you to take advantage of that Ignite duration by stacking up a bunch of Ignites and then popping them all at once by hitting Enchant Weapon, and then you'd have 200% more damage across all of your Ignites. So it triples your damage. That would be very cool. But for me, because I'm using Ignites for ward generation as well, I specifically did not want these points. Fireball is a pretty boring tree. Let's put my face up here for just a moment. I think there's only really one way to spec your fireball, and that is sequence fireball, extra fireballs, and then this fire flame burst proc on the bottom right here, plus homing. That's just about the only thing you can do with fireball to make it feel good these days. There's not much variety. It's kind of an old skill. The, uh, the variety that we have here, we only have two points in piercing heat because we have 50% chance to pierce on our helmet up here. If I didn't have the helmet, I would have all four points in here. And then maybe I would put mana regeneration on my gear, or maybe I would put another point in here. Normally, you don't see people specking into mana sphere on the far right side of the tree. The reason that I have this is I felt like my damage was fine. And if I was going to die during my arena push, it was going to be me mismanaging my mana. So that's why I specced into this node over here. With careful play, you probably are not taking this. Or maybe you could just like have mana regeneration on your gear somewhere else. I have 8 mana regen instead of 15 or 16 or 17. Uh, next up, let's talk about... Let's go Meteor. So Meteor was one of the flagship skills that we had to use this weekend. We had to use you know, either Meteor or Volcanic Orb or Disintegrate. I was thinking about using Volcanic Orb, um, and I was using it for a while, specced all the way to the far left for a bunch of shrapnel damage. I saw some people taking this node and coming up to the uh, to the top right here because this creates a bunch of small ignites, and a bunch of small ignites would be good to try to abuse the ring. The reason I didn't do this while I was playing Volcanic Orb is this node feels like garbage. This node has 40% less cast speed on it. No, thank you. I don't want this. So I was trying Volcanic Orb to apply a bunch of Ignites because once you have the shrapnel going inside of a monster, if you're aiming into the monster, all of that shrapnel shotguns from the inside. So I figured that would be a pretty good place to be. Um, afterward, I tried out Meteor instead and I just liked it more. So I would rather just cast Fireball more consistently and then use uh, Meteor every once in a while just to have a big uh, boost to cast speed, some percent increased damage, and it kind of fixes my mana situation as well with this Craterborn buff on the left side. So I have all three points into Aftermath, which means that I, I actually don't want to mana tunnel it. I, I want my Meteor cast to consume mana so that I get uh, I get to take advantage of this. So I'm specced into mana tunnel and teleport, but I was not using mana tunnel to cast my Meteor. Not very often anyways. Sometimes I was. So we're basically just using Meteor for the buff. Let's keep going. Let's talk about Teleport because I teased it already. Um, I like using Teleport for stun immunity on the very bottom left, which means you path through Mana Tunnel. Mana Tunnel, I have a different video here on YouTube talking about why this node is awesome. It has some really cool applications with Static Orb and Lightning Blast specifically, and you can use uh, Mana Tunnel to fix your situation with Volcanic Orb if you wanted to go the Volcanic Orb route with this build. So um, it's worth noting, but... Because of the Aftermath node, you actually need to spend the mana on Meteor in order to trigger this, and it felt good anyway, so I wasn't really concerned with it. Um, next up is just like having one decoy behind me. It feels like cheating. It's just really nice to have enemies target something behind you instead of targeting you. Last up is Flame Ward. Hopefully this is boring for you. If you've seen one Flame Ward tree, hopefully you've seen them all. 
Uh, I have one, two, three flex points into ward here. If you didn't want to spend these three flex points here, you might spec into like some uh, percent increased damage over here. All right, so that about covers it for the uh, for the skills there and the mastery. Let's talk about gear next. Ignite builds, uh, I guess pretty much every ignite build is just an exercise in can you get these garbage uniques and can you get them with LP on them? So hopefully the answer is yes. We had like seven pairs of atrophies that we dropped with one LP. So uh, this is the best one that I could make. I didn't want life on it, but I needed something to make my resistance better. So I got some necrotic res here. We have a two LP woven flesh with fireball and intelligence. I wish that this had plus fireball and also ignite chance. The ignite chance would have been better than intelligence, but that's the best chess piece that I landed with this. Fiery dragon shoes are worthwhile to talk about. I wasn't able to find some because they're relatively rare. But Fiery Dragon Shoes, remember, they have that new line of text on them, because they've just been buffed recently, that says, Reduced Extra Damage Taken from Critical Strikes. So, in my opinion, if you have Fiery Dragon Shoes, you don't need to build Crit Avoid. If I had Fiery Dragon Shoes, I would probably take this chess piece off and try to make a new chess piece that has plus two to Fireball, and then, maybe even Exalted, chance to ignite on hit with Fire Skills. Those would be the better two prefixes for me. And then the suffixes didn't really matter because, again, we have 100,000 100, ward, but, you know, it is what it is. It's worth noting, if you are, uh, if you're not using these rings for generation, if you're using something like a Twisted Heart instead for your ward generation, then you do want uh, a life total because Twisted Heart converts a portion of your current life into ward. So you want your current life to be high. Cinder Song would be an excellent thing for us to uh, have LP on. Unfortunately, we didn't find any LP. The flat damage does not matter. The implicit is very low. It's only five. And then it is 22 as an explicit, but we don't care about any of that because we're ignite and ignite does not use adaptive damage. The most important thing about this is, well, it's got 169 fire damage. So nice. It also has minus three and it also has minus three as the implicit. So this thing is minus six to the mana cost of my skills, along with a little minus one that we specced into in the fireball tree itself. So we have minus seven mana cost. If I took off Cinder Song, you can see the mana it costs is 4 right now. It goes up to 14. So 4 to 14. If I have a mana cost of 4, if I put on a normal wand, instead of being 4, my mana cost is 9. Just to give you an idea of what that extra minus 3 mana cost for fire skills line of text is doing for us. So we have sequence fireball. We're shooting all these fireballs in a sequence. So this plus 2 fireball becomes plus 1 because it gets halved, but it's still very good. It still gives us plus one additional hit, which is extra ignites and extra ward generation, which is awesome. Uh, last thing to talk about is we're using a shield. If you wanted to use a staff, you could do that. Uh, you would lose the minus three from the Cinder Song here, but you get access to a ton more damage. But again, maybe you'd want to use some uh, some extra mana regen in your build. Maybe you use a temple staff base because that even has mana regeneration as an implicit modifier to it. So that's an option for you. If you want to go ham and build as much ward as possible, you could use one of the new base types. There's a new offhand catalyst called an Opulent Focus, which has a ton of ward on it. It's just that normally if you're using an offhand, it's probably a crit offhand. So if you want to play an ignite build, maybe you don't care about using a shield. Maybe you're not as scared of dying as I am, <laughs> but you could use an offhand Opulent Focus in order to get a ton of extra ward for your character. And then you can combine that either with these rings before they get nerfed, or you can go the Twisted Heart route. Uh, let's talk about idols next, and then we'll go blessings. For our idols, we have uh, Ignite Effect and Chance to Ignite on Hit with Fire Skills. So Ignite Effect, Ignite Effect, Ignite Effect. And then for our defensive modifiers, looking at the suffixes here, we also have a Chance to Gain Lightning Aegis when Hit. So Lightning Aegis, uh, let's see if we can get the text to show up. Lightning Aegis when Hit, Static Orb, we can look at this. Lightning Aegis grants percent increased lightning damage and also 25% less damage taken. So Static Orb is a really strong skill for all sorts of reasons. And also because when you're using it, you're probably going to put one or two points into Static Armor and you're always going to have this 25% less damage taken. That Lightning Aegis comes from this. It comes from Idols, if you have the kind of Idols that I have up here. And then you, I, you might also recognize it from one node in, uh, in Lightning Blast which is a 10% chance on hit. I guess it's 5% per point times two uh, on hit to gain Lightning Aegis. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? We can talk about Blessings will be the last thing here. So we have Ignite from the Black Sun. 
some lightning resistance from Lagan. We would like for this to be all resistance. Um, this necrotic is not good, but it's the best thing that I could farm up. Remember, we don't really want crit avoid because we're either using a woven flesh, which is what I have, or more realistically, you don't want crit avoid because you're going to be using fiery dragon shoes, and fiery dragon shoes kind of take the place of wanting crit avoidance in your uh, in your build. For our last three blessings, we have some uh, physical resistance here and some flat armor over here. Endurance is not particularly important for us because again, we've got a hundred thousand ward, and my life total is very very small. So I only have 20% endurance in this build. So I think that about covers the decisions that we made in the build. And uh, I guess like what goes into playing a knight character. Again, like I said before, I don't think it'd be a good choice to play ignite fireball. I think just playing crit fireball with some ignite chance seems like a better way to take advantage of this ring. Um, and then again, I, I assume that this ring is going to get nerfed within the next couple days. So, like always, if you have any questions about this build or about anything else, you can always drop a comment in the comment section of this video here. Or you can drop by live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the pig. But as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.